or what you would intuitively expect the job to be. It provides some information, you can start it, stop it, query it. It runs independent from uh, any clients that provide a ticket or something. And um, the second, um, more interesting uh, concept is that of a client set scheduler. Scheduler is always attached uh, to a clock, or one or more scheduler, no, zero or more schedules are attached to a clock. And um, it permits the client to submit operations to a scheduler, which, unlike normal X requests, are not executed immediately, but they are deferred to a later point in time. And uh, it submits timestamps uh, that define when uh, or when not uh, these operations should be executed. Expired timestamps, because they want to have operations expired after the time of service overloaded and simply uh, just uh, can't handle it over the request, it uh, should be permitted to drop the thing. Um, the operation that I can perform um, through a scheduler is uh, sample processing, I'll return to that. Uh, but not only that, um, actually I can also do uh, some render operations, uh, yeah, uh, render uh, operations uh, pertaining to render extension, we could also add other operations, but these are the most interesting. Um, I don't need them for all here, I'm just mentioning them because uh, they are in there in the implementation and I need them for other work, uh, for uh, video work that I've also created, but I don't want to talk about that, just mention that this concept uh, is of course very generic and you could do more than that, uh, more than just <coughs> this concept. Okay, the audio extension also includes a number of new um, server-side um, resource uh, classes. Um, the first is a sample buffer, which, as the name suggests, stores the sample data inside the server. Uh, it's a one-dimensional data structure, so it's not to uh, store pixels, the sample buffer uh, stores samples. It's one-dimensional, so uh, accessible to a single index value, and it stores sample values for uh, each index value or for limited range of index values. Um, the value is stored on scalar. This means if you want to do multi-channel audio or stereo audio, you need two sample buffers. One providing data for the left channel, one providing data for the right channel. I've done this decomposition because it greatly simplifies uh, the FPH programming interface and, uh, well, otherwise it would be at the front uh, classes. I tried this in the beginning and uh, ended up simplifying it this way. Um, the um, sample buffer uh, only, really only store uh, sample values, but no um, temporal dimension of each, for each sample. This means that they do not store any sample rate or something. Uh, so the server just swaps samples without knowing uh, which, um, according to which sample rate they should be processed. Um, this is, uh, as a later, uh, using a different mechanism. Uh, I'm just mentioning this here. Uh, return to this later. Um, the extension supports uh, several mechanisms to get data into and out of uh, sample buffers. Uh, of course, you can upload, download uh, samples uh, simply through the X protocol. Um, much uh, like you can upload PixMap. Some elementary functions in thesis um, and uh, arithmetic functions. Uh, these are really simple functions which I've tried to illustrate here a little bit. For this example, multiply accumulate. Uh, you just pick a range of samples from uh, one uh, sample buffer, a range of samples from another sample buffer, so these are multiplied pairwise, and then uh, plate or accumulated into a third uh, target sample buffer. So uh, all these arithmetic operations are of a similar quality than uh, the, uh, like the operation I just uh, showed on the right, so they are really simple, uh, the operations that you can perform uh, for the audio extension. Um, another type of operation I can perform is say, a convolution operator, which of course allows me to um, implement finite and fast response filters. Um, this convolution operator is a little bit more generic than what you would find in uh, textbooks on um, well, digital signal processing. It's a little bit generalized uh, discrete convolution operator. And um, this convolution operator is also used for resampling. Uh, I've already said um, a sample buffer does not store any associated sample rates, so uh, a client has to keep track whether the samples in a given sample buffer have to be interpreted as 20 kilohertz or 44 kilohertz. Uh, the server doesn't care, it doesn't know. Um, so if the client wants to transfer sample data from one buffer that the client knows is to be interpreted as 20 kilohertz into a sample buffer that the client knows is to be interpreted as 48 kilohertz, it explicitly has to issue a request to transfer the data and do resampling at the same time. And this is uh, usually done uh, using convolution filters. 
Um, so the server also never does any implicit path rate conversion. Uh, this is also deliberate in the design because um, unlike for um, images where you can use, for example, um, bilinear interpolation as a safety fault that gives good results, um, there is no such a safety fault for audio that you could uh, really use. It very much depends on uh, the application scenarios. So I decided to pull this out of the, um, of the server and provide it as well. The client just had to do this and has to issue uh, a uh, the sample buffers can be used as static sample buffers uh, in that they uh, well, um, store um, sample values for static range of indexes, but they also support the sliding window concept for um, streaming audio. Um, well, try to illustrate the concept here a bit better, I hope, uh, than with words alone. Um, what I can do is um, if a sample buffer uh, represents sample values for the uh, index values B0 through 7, then I can change the window of interest of the sample buffer uh, to, let's say, 4 through 11. Um, and as a result, uh, these uh, sample values, they drop out of the window and their values are lost. Um, and uh, a number of other samples, they are shifted into the window, they are initialized to 0, but you later load, uh, go you can later go and uh, place other values into the sample buffer and probably you should using the mechanism on, on the previous slide. Uh, you can always uh, extend all the bounds uh, of the sample buffer. Um, it's as well defined semantics. It's uh, basically the same as if you would draw out by the fixed map or something. The data is simply lost or if you read back the adjustments and flag. Uh, it's well defined as it is always possible. Um, this uh, sliding window uh, concept, or this, this, this window shifting concept, um, I would introduce that uh, for the reading. Uh, first of all, the sample buffer the concept allows random access to any position in the sample buffer at any time, so I'm not using simple feedback buffers. Um, this is important for the loss and uh, recovery of synchronicity. And this sliding window concept uh, provides a good decoupling between uh, yeah, producers and consumers of sample data. Of course, the roles between producer and consumer that, that may, may change. Sometimes the clients, the producer, and the server, the consumer, or uh, the other way around, depending on if, uh, if you're capturing or playing back. And this uh, allows me the coupling of that. Uh, note that access uh, within this range uh, that is unaffected by the shift, uh, so this, is, uh, this overlapping range of all the new window uh, access is always safe. And um, so if anyone uh, does control access in this, uh, in this range, nothing happens to him. So uh, you're always safe um, if you shift the window um, at the rate uh, and make sure that all accesses of all concurrent accesses fall into this overlapping range, you're safe. Um, clients may have, uh, uh, this window uh, shift operation has to be performed by clients. The server does not does this not automatically. It's a client request that the client can perform on a sample buffer. And, um, well, there are multiple options, of course, uh, the client may have um, to, um, to use this and uh, make sure that the window uh, is always played correctly. You can do a large window with multiple, uh, with infrequent lazy shift or small window with, uh, with aggressive updates. It all depends on the client and the synchronization requirements. So, the server is simply done here. So, now that we can do, uh, let, let we can store and process uh, or compose uh, sample values inside the server, we probably want to do something else with them, and that is probably playback and capture. This is achieved through uh, two uh, other um, server side objects. It uses a PCM device. Uh, well, it should be quite obvious what this is something that's capable of capturing or uh, playing back PCM data. And uh, the second is a PCM context. This is essentially a configuration uh, of a PCM device, so a set of parameters uh, that can be applied uh, to such a PCM device. It contains information such as sample rate, may also contain other information such as allowable playback latency and other things. And it also references, um, typically references one or more sample buffers and uh, points to position inside the sample buffers which uh, serve as the point where um, playback or capture begins, and once the font is activated, it will just uh, start reading or writing values uh, into the sample buffers beginning from this position. Note the client has to do window shifts uh, to make sure um, that capture and playback never slide off of this window, otherwise, he will go uh, uh, through this gray out area and read back zeros, uh, which equals silence in the case of new loss.
Um, the important connection point uh, to the time, uh, extension to the timing service uh, at the beginning, is that each PCM contact can also serve as a uh, time source uh, for all scheduling operation. So this means uh, I can attach a scheduler to such a PCM contact, submit operations to the scheduler, and these operations executed uh, synchronous to playback or capture of um, sample data to a PCM device. And uh, of course, this is what the uh, client application that I demonstrated at the beginning actually does. It uh, just submitted, it submits requests to a such a scheduler and uh, realizes uh, the effects uh, in this way, for example, for the um, uh, reverb effect, I just uh, added multiple copies of uh, multiple small echoes uh, behind uh, the main design of uh, using multiply accumulate. This is very easy to do and find out the cost response filter for the low cost filter, which is also quite easy to do. Um, the implementation tries very hard to satisfy all of this, uh, all these timing requests. Um, actually, uh, it, it usually executes most of the client's uh, requests in a dedicated real-time thread to make sure the timing requirements are really met. Um, also reach out to this. So, um, now just a few words on the desktop uh, audio uh, mixing model. Um, the way it works uh, is uh, roughly uh, shown in this um, figure. Uh, the audio manager goes and sets up playback through a PCM device from uh, a sample buffer created by the audio manager or multiple sample buffers created by the audio manager if you want to do stereo audio, obviously. And um, all the other audio clients that want to playback something, um, they also create their own sample buffers in which they provide the data they would actually like to playback. But instead of uh, letting the PCM device reach from all of these sample buffers, um, the audio manager's the responsibility to issue the uh, compositing operations that transfer the sample data from uh, these uh, play uh, client sample buffers into the main uh, playback sample buffer. And uh, of course, this model offers a lot of flexibility because the audio manager can basically do what he wants uh, with the sample data, it can simply ignore a client, uh, in that case, it's used it, or it can, uh, well, do, for example, positional audio as I demonstrated at the beginning by, well, attenuating or left the right channel accordingly. Um, a lot of options. Something that I did not demonstrate but that is certainly possible is possible to transfer device switching. If I just attach another audio device and add it to the user, instruct the audio manager, okay, now don't play back from the first audio device but choose the second. It can just uh, choose, uh, it can just pull the PCM device under, uh, under the client and start playing uh, the other audio device and the client won't even notice. And uh, the nice thing is, this requires actually no cooperation from the X server at all. The X server doesn't know or doesn't care that we just switch the main playback device. The audio manager can do this completely on its own, provided it learns that the new device has a or something like that. Okay, um, now a few um, rather random interpretation notes um, on how this looks in the inside. Um, the extension uh, itself is uh, really tiny, it's about 8,000 lines of pseudo code, 8,200 or something, and this report uh, uh, includes all of uh, that I uh, just presented. It also includes uh, the ability to send a timed render request, uh, so if you factor that out, you are well under 8,000 lines of code. Um, I tried very hard to implement it uh, without any um, intrusion into the uh, core X architecture. Um, this is simply to make it easier for, for, for anyone who wants to, uh, to deploy it for testing purposes. You can basically just uh, compile it, download it, load it dynamically, but there's one case that uh, you need to press save X server because I just have to start uh, a um, dedicated audio processing thread with, and usually with real time priorities, otherwise they simply can't met uh, useful uh, timing requirements. Uh, so you just have to relink the server against the uh, thread save with C. Uh, Although on Linux systems you can do a neat LD preload trick, so if you LD preload to the correct P thread library, it will also work. Um, yes. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'm actually not really touching core code, and uh, I'm not really touching the threading model of uh, the X server. The dedicated um, audio thread really only does audio processing and nothing else. Or the drawing not performs from this separate thread. This bounces back to the main. Uh, uh, if the need ever arises. Um, about the real-time audio effects, I also mentioned that the client uh, that the server tries very hard to execute client requests 
uh, in the client frame specified by the client. Uh, this usually means that the client operations are executed in the thread performed with real time priorities. Uh, so, so this opens a window for clients to ex execute code uh, in a limited way in real time thread. Of course, I need a little bit of access control. Um, for that, uh, first, of course, to provide fairness and also to prevent the client from uh, locking up the server completely. We don't want uh, a, a process that doesn't have the ability to run real time to, uh, well, to use this mechanism to lock up the machine. And uh, the approach that I've chosen here is that I um, approximate uh, the cost of the uh, request that I executed or that would have to be executed. And according to this cost model, um, uh, schedule them into real time threads or deny schedules them into real time threads or maybe dropping them. Um, this is very easily possible in this case because remember the operations that I'm doing are really simple. They are always uh, on, uh, on the scale of multiply accumulate. So do a fixed set of multiplications, do a fixed set of addition. Uh, you can, can actually uh, compute uh, the number of instructions you need. Uh, to do this very precisely, and uh, you can actually uh, also uh, compute the number of cycles you're going to spend, uh, even if it blows your cache uh, completely because uh, it, it's just not in there. Uh, you can compute that fairly accurately, I've uh, done a lot of experiments with that, uh, and it doesn't hurt if you overestimate. So I'm currently overestimating uh, the typical case uh, by a factor of two. Um, this doesn't matter because uh, it just means, well, if you overestimate by a factor of two, this only means that you can only get 50% of uh, CPU processing time ever spent in the real time thread. You don't want to spend 100% of CPU processing time in there anyway, so uh, overestimating really doesn't work that much in this case. Um, you really want to listen to the low 10 or 20% uh, uh, anyway for this mechanism uh, to defend against uh, intentional or unintentional. So, um, to sum it up, I think um, this uh, approach to uh, is very important here in the first idea. Well, it just means a lot of the, the infrastructure to write standalone all the uh, You actually uh, end up implementing, uh, re implementing all of this. Um, yeah, and you also have to. Uh, Suddenly have to implement uh, a, a security model. For example, if you just go uh, into the XO and just enable the base or something, uh, then you get security uh, for the power extension uh, automatically for free, so you don't have to worry about that. And what you also get on the video synchronization, uh, if you want to do that, uh, is essentially free. Um, you just schedule of the blitting operations on the big screen uh, with the audio and it works, and it also works reliably across the network. Um, I tried uh, to make the um, audio model mimic the um, existing X image and video processing model uh, quite closely. Uh, so, um, well, the consumer artists are both very intentional. Uh, Try to maintain uh, no policy in the server and shift more complex to the client, but they should not neglect to tell you that uh, the client can, in fact, get very complex. Um, because you have to do a lot of planning ahead and maybe if you decide, uh, okay, uh, this is not valid anymore, I want to do something different, uh, change the mind, roll back and do something different. And, well, I can get uh, low latency um, through um, this mechanism. Um, this is quite suitable for this support here. Um, I can place, for example, a uh, um, sample buffers into shared memory. And in that case, since the sample buffers or the data contained there is only pulled by the real time threads running inside the X server, you get essentially the same latency as, for example, other emix or any other system that uses uh, shared memory to communicate with the real time thread. Um, so it's quite usable. Um, yeah, uh, we have some graphics drivers, ironically, exactly the graphics driver is left off that's preventing me from doing, achieving the latency that I actually desire. So, um, this is really cool. Uh, maybe I think your curiosity if that's the case. Um, you can try it out. Uh, it's uh, all there. Um, the sources are all there and intend to put in the menu. I have not done this yet. Um, but I will do it Monday night uh, at late. Um, yeah, so otherwise, um, if there are any questions, I'm here for interrogation. I don't know if we may still have a little bit time for that. Yeah, a few minutes. And uh, otherwise, I would just uh, thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.